In this last video on the subgradient method, we will wrap things up and condensate our assumptions marked by the bullet points and the conclusions marked by these check marks. Um, we will formulate them uh, as a theorem. So, theorem. So, what, what do we have? Let H be a finite dimensional inner product space. Let F defined on H with values in the real numbers be convex. Then we have an arbitrary starting point. Let uh, x0 be an h. And then uh, we want to um, determine um, the value of gamma k norm of sk in advance, because then we know in advance that this summability condition uh, will be satisfied. So uh, we want to set gamma, or we want to call gamma k norm of sk just, for example, tk. So let tk um, uh, be sequence of positive numbers such that. And now, um, as I said, tk will be equal to gamma k norm of sk. So we want the sum um, of tk squared to be less than plus infinity. And down here, we want the sum of gamma k to be plus infinity. So we want the sum of um, tk over norm of sk um, also to be plus infinity. And we know that the norm of sk is bounded. So it's bounded from above in particular. And therefore, we know that we can estimate tk over norm sk by a multiple of tk. So it will suffice that um, the sum of tk be plus infinity. OK. Um, uh, for example, you can choose um, tk equal to a over b plus k with a and b positive. Um, for example, for a and b equal to 1, you, you know that this is the sequence 1 over k plus 1. And this sequence is non-summable because it's the harmonic sequence and it will um, will diverge, as is uh, well known. And the sum of squares of those is, in contrast, um, um, summable. And it will, uh, and the sum, as is also known, of the of one over k plus one squared is something like p, pi, pi squared over six, I guess. Um, yeah, so this sequence with any with some values a and b, which you can choose, will satisfy those two conditions and therefore can be chosen as the sequence gamma k times norm of sk. OK, so then the subgradient method, and here you can uh, we will formulate this uh, a bit more specifically than we have done here. So for all n uh, greater or equal than 0, what we do is we choose a subgradient at the point xn. Uh, we have already given um, a point, we are already given a point x0 and h, so we can start this process. And if sn uh, happens to be 0, 
uh, then of course uh, we we will have well, we might have problems uh, determine ga uh, gamma k because um, gamma k um, is t k over norm of s k or gamma n is uh, t n over norm of s n and if norm of s n is zero then yeah this is bad bad luck but uh, the good news is that we can just stop and we will see later that we ha will have we will have found uh, a minimizer of the function f and if s n is not equal to zero then you just said x n plus one or we just said x n plus one uh, to x n minus t n over norm s n times s n okay then the subgradient method and this is this thing here this uh, yeah, iteration satisfies the following things if s n equals zero for some n then so so if this first case ever happens then x n is a minimizer of f and if only the second case happens so if s n is not equal to zero for all n uh, greater than zero and if there exists a minimizer in in the first case uh, if if this ever stops then we know that xn has to be a minimizer of f which we will prove of course but uh, then this condition that there is a, uh, there is a, there is a minimizer of f is automatic but uh, we we need to assume the existence in in the case that we don't stop our algorithm so if if such a minimizer exists so if there exist minimizers or a minimizer um, of f then we have shown that the sequence um, xn um, converges to one of them um, and so this is this main result um, and uh, our, our other main results will be that um, that we have this a Gaudi convergence rate so we have this f of psi n minus f of x bar so um, yeah we can so uh, th th this is the um, yeah okay this is good enough um, oh, this is not what I wanted so then what we know is that the the sum of of gamma k norm of s k squared a gamma k squared norm of s k squared is just the sum of t k squared which just has some fixed value and this uh, distance between our starting point and this and any solution uh, also is a fixed value um, so this um, is uh, capital O of one over gamma n where and now we just have to make we just have to write these things here so this is our Gaudi convergence rate since we usually don't know uh, the distance between our initial point and the solution we just write that this is or we can write this in big o notation so um, the gap between the, this ergodic point here, this weighted average of our iterates, and 
the function value at our optimal solution will be um, upper bounded by a constant times 1 over this sequence capital gamma of n. And the capital gamma of n is just uh, defined as the sum of the gamma k from 0 to n minus 1. And psi n, this is this point, is just 1 over gamma n sum of gamma k xk from, for k from 0 to n minus 1. Okay? So this gives us our ergodic convergence rate. And the other points are less interesting. The, the other points were, were merely, um, rather like steps toward these two main results. So we can go through this a little bit. We have already um, said that this inequality is, is useful for, for testing if we have done, if we have implemented our algorithm right and the subgradients right, but it's not really of, of interest in itself. Um, then we have that the limit of xn to any minimizer exists. Yeah, uh, of course, if, if, if the limit of xn exists, then this limit also exists. Um, that's, that is clear. xn is bounded. This is true for all convergent sequences. Um, the sequence of subgradients is bounded. Yes, true. But it's not really that you, you care about this too, uh, so much. You cannot, uh, at least not from what we have shown, we cannot guarantee that the sequence of Sn converges to zero, for example. This would be a more interesting result because then you can use this, or you could use this as a stopping criterion. If your subgradient is small enough, then you just stop. But uh, this is not the case for, um, as far as we know, for our algorithm. Okay, and then uh, you have these summability for the function values. Um, yeah, um, that's um, not really useful in practice. It's more, more relevant to have some concrete result for, for some specific value psi, uh, psi n in our case. So, um, yeah, and then the, the, the remaining results are uh, basically the, uh, the ergodic convergence rate and the convergence of the sequence xn. So this is the, um, the main condensed content of our last videos. Let's just give a proof for the statements we have not really shown. So obviously this is directly in our assumptions. Um, the subgradient algorithms is also in our assumptions, at least for the second case, that we don't stop anywhere. So we have a, an infinite sequence. X bar is a minimizer of F. This is just assumed for the um, for um, for the uh, for the, uh, the the existence of, of minimizers is relevant here. Although, um, so this yeah one of them. Okay, let's let's just. Let's just de uh, define what x bar means because that this is not really clear here. And it's if if we just do this for for one of them, say x bar here, and then you you have this you you know what x bar is. So this is a minimizer, and this can well be the minimizer this that this converges to, because they all have the same function value. Okay, and then. Um, we have obviously some k from 0 to infinity, um, gamma k squared, norm of sk squared. And this is, since we have set gamma k to tk over norm sk, This is just the sequence of tk squared. And our assumption was that the sequence is summable. OK. 
Okay, so this is clear. And the last assumption we had was that the sum of uh, gamma k should be plus infinity. So here we use the boundedness of the subgradients. So let norm of Sn less or equal than, and we, we call this number capital L for all n greater or equal than zero. Then we have, and let's start a new line. Uh, so we have to prove that the gamma k's are, are non-summable. And this is just uh, from k, k from 0 to infinity. Um, and, and again, it's tk over norm of sk. And since norm of sk will be less or equal than L, this will be greater or equal than um, sum of tk over L. And this is obviously 1 over L uh, times the sum of tk. And the sum of tk is plus infinity. So we have proven all our bullet points here. And therefore, at least the second part is true. So whenever we have an infinite sequence, then it converges to a minimizer of f. If, if we stop, then we cannot really talk about convergence. But we know then that xn is a minimizer of f. And the reason is that if sn equals 0 for some n, then, um, well, 0 is in df of xn. And this means, just by definition of the subgradient, that for all x in h, um, f of x is greater or equal than f of xn plus inner product of this subgradient with x minus xn. So this is f of xn. So f of x greater or equal than f of xn for all x in h, which means that xn is a minimizer. And this is basically together with what we have shown in the last videos, in particular this main result of the convergence of the sequence xn, our um, result um, on, so it's, it's obviously not, there, there exists more, but our result on the gradient, a subgradient method.